everyday things which are embedded with either electronics, software or sensors to the internet and this in turn enables us to collect as well as exchange between these things. Now, when I say things, it can be anything and everything. Let's say I have an internet platform wherein I can connect these things. If I take the example of my house, I can connect my lock, I can connect my AC, I can connect my light and all this can be managed on the same platform. Now, since I have a platform itself, I can also connect my car to this. I can keep a track of my fuel meter, I can keep a track of my speed limit, I can also keep track of the location of the car as well. Now, if there is a collective platform where all of these are connected, wouldn't it be great? Because I would love to have the AC on and set a cool temperature at my home by the time I reach back from office. If I have a platform that knows my preference and that keeps track of where I am, now any technology that is available today has not reached its 100% capabilities and it always has that gap to grow. Internet of Things is one of the major technologies in the world today that can help any other technology reach its true and complete potential as well. Now there are mainly three aspects to Internet of Things as to how it works. First is the connect aspect. Here basically what you need to work on is you need to ensure that there's a connectivity between all the things around you, all the necessary things to the Internet of Things platform. Okay, then comes Analyze. Now I have my things around me. They each are going to generate some amount of data. Now this data needs to be collected and it needs to be analyzed to build a business intelligence solution. If I have a good insight from the data that is gathered from all of this, then definitely I can call my system as a smart system. Finally, what happens is in order to improvise and improve your system, you need to integrate it with various models to improve the user's experience. Now, the first stage of connect is device virtualization because what you need to first do is that you need to standardize the integration of the device to the enterprise platform which is present on the cloud. Okay, now it could be present on a cloud, it could be present on a server, but again, it's all going to be connected through the internet. So what I need to do is that I need to ensure that certain level of standard is present on the device so that it can go on and connect to my Internet of Things platform. Now to help you understand this better, there could be a standard power plug and there could be a power plug which has an inbuilt Wi-Fi support so that it can connect to my lab. Now to build a smart home system, I need the second power point because there only I would have the access to control it over the Internet and my system could integrate with respect to the same. Okay, now if I take the first standard PowerPoint, then what would happen is that I need to manually switch it on and switch it off. However, in the second case, I could send a signal to it and this in turn will switch it on and switch it off. So there's supposed to be a level of standardization through which I can integrate all of these devices to my platform. Next comes high speed messaging. So now what I have done is that I've connected all these devices to my platform, but these devices in turn generate a lot of data and this data is what is going to help us understand better on how we can improve the overall system and help and provide the user with better experience. So for that we need to have high speed messaging. Okay, this basically means that there needs to be a reliable, secure and a bi-directional communication channel between the devices and the platform. Now the purpose of it being bi-directional is because you need to control each one of them as well. Let's say I want to switch on the AC then the signal would be going on from the cloud platform to the device. So this is how it works out, okay? So every communication needs to be reliable, it needs to be secure and it needs to be bi-directional as well. Moving on to the third point of connect, you need to have endpoint management. If I don't have an endpoint management, I have established a way through which all my devices can connect to my platform. I have also ensured that the data is going to be sent from the device to the cloud and the cloud can send back to the device as well through a secure channel but if I don't actually identify from which device which data is coming and how this data has to be processed then it becomes a failure of the system. This is where endpoint management comes into picture. Endpoint management basically helps you in managing the device's endpoint identity, the metadata and the overall life cycle involved with respect to these things as such. Okay, so to put it quite simply it basically helps you identify from which device which data is coming and what needs to be done with this data as well. Now coming on to the next feature is analyze and the first thing that you need to do for analysis is the stream processing. 
Now, if the data coming from the device is not on a real time basis, then my system is of no use. There's no use if I tell my system to switch on the AC at my home and by the time I reach there, if the AC is not even turned on, then it's a failure on my system. Okay, so real time analysis of the incoming and outgoing data must be done with respect to different aggregations, filtering, correlations, processing and so forth. Okay, now apart from this, what you need to do is that this is raw data that is being streamed from all the things. You need to identify which is contextually important information which is going to be taken forward. So once I have the relevant information, then I can even generate composite streams of information which can be taken ahead for future analysis and understanding as well. Now this is what your data enrichment process does. Then you have event store. Now in event store, basically any information that you want can be queried and visualized from the massive amount of data which is present on my cloud platform. Okay, now this in turn can also help me get a better insight and analysis. If I have all the enriched data present on my cloud platform, I have a tool which helps me identify what is needed, helps me analyze this data, helps me visualize it, then definitely it becomes more useful as well. And when I have data coming from different things as such, this in turn can also lead to being a collection of big data. Now, when I talk about big data, it's not just few GB of data, so it's going to be terabytes of data because because the data generated from the things around us is that vast. And if you're doing it over a period of time, then definitely it is going to grow into a big data domain as well. Now, coming to the third feature of Internet of Things comes enterprise connectivity. So this is what I was basically telling you about. Let's say I have a requirement from my retailer or even an enterprise organization which is present. It could be Amazon, it could be Flipkart, anything as such, any enterprise organization which provides me a service. If I can connect to them through this platform, then definitely my overall process also becomes easier as well. Let's say there's a service provider. Okay, let's say there's a leakage in my plumbing or let's say there's some issue with respect to my electricity. Then it can contact to the corresponding service provider. It can send them a detail and correspondingly they would be dispatched. This would in turn reduce my effort of having to check the problem, having to call someone, wait for them to come back. All that gets reduced to minimal required effort as well. Now, how does this communication happen? So for that we have REST API. Okay, once I've integrated my REST API with respect to the cloud application and my Internet of Things, then communication between the enterprise, communication between the platform and the communication between the things around us can be made more efficient and can be more easy as well. Now the third aspect is command and control. If I don't have command and control on my platform, then it's of no use. Yes, I build a very great environment. I build something that's quite extraordinary. But if I cannot command it, if I cannot control it as per my requirement, then the system in itself is not useful. If I cannot tell my door in a smart home to unlock when I want it, then it becomes failure on my part. If I cannot control the AC on my smart home, then again, it's a failure. So always the major aspect when you integrate with respect to these things, the major thing is that you need to ensure there's a huge control on the system and you're able to command it as per your requirement. Now this command could either be through a watch.